Happy New Year. I realize this is really our first Sunday in the new year. We were here at New Year's Eve, but it wasn't quite 2018. So it is good to be here. I'm glad I'm feeling better, and um, I'm glad some of you are feeling better too. It looks like we've still got a few folks out. Some are not feeling so good, so we'll be lifting them in prayer. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else, but I can't think of anything. So we will um, not be greeting today, however, because of the flu. So please wave at each other as you, you know, go through worship. And we'll wave at those that are, are joining us via YouTube. We're so glad that um, this YouTube video goes all over the place, all over not just the local area, but across the country and even across the world, we found. So we are waving at, at our friends on YouTube as well. Let us begin with our gathering song, verse 1 of How Lovely, Lord. God, we thank you for this new day, this new Sunday, new Lord's Day in a new year, at least our calendar year. So Lord, we bless you for uh, making all things new, making us new, as we're going to find out in, in those baptismal waters that we're going to talk about today. Lord, thank you that you were already here this morning, long before we woke up, and that you call us to yourself, that we might enjoy and experience and worship your mighty and holy self, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Father God, for the water for life on earth and the living water promised to us in your Son, Jesus. May our souls be refreshed as we hear your word to us today. Amen. So our first scripture lesson today is Genesis 1, 1 through 5. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. The word of the Lord. <laughs> Sorry. There's no good time to cough when you have a microphone on, I've decided. Our second scripture this morning is from Mark, verses, uh, chapter 1, verse 4 through 11. Hear the word of the Lord. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey, he proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart 
and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. May God add his blessing to the reading and hearing of God's holy word. Stay. All right. There is something about water. It attracts us, whether it's rivers or ponds or oceans or even mud puddles. Nearly 70% 70, 70 of the Earth's surface is covered by water. We ourselves consist of something between, consist of something between 50 to 60% of water in our bodies. So we have to have clean water to drink, to cook, to keep us clean. Water can be very useful to us in other ways, for transportation, for sports, for, for food. Um, but water can be dangerous, as we've seen lately, when it freezes and it comes ashore out of the ocean and then freezes your car in place as it did in Boston, or when it floods and washes things away, or just the terrible storms we sometimes have with water. Water appears early in creation. Thank you, Adam, for, um, for reading, being my lay leader and reading that. It appears early um, as, as God the Father and Son and Holy Spirit moved and spoke over the face of the deep and the face of the waters. Uh, commentary writer and seminary professor Terence Fratham, I hope I said his name right, describes the condition of this fledgling creation as before ordered creation. This was kind of the beginnings before it really got um, put into good order. He says the formless void is not nothing. Earth, waters, wind, and darkness exist, but they await further creative work. I thought kind of like us. We await further creative work this day, don't we? Water and water is a part, if you keep reading Genesis 1, Genesis 1 they continue as part of the creation process. God uh, refines them and, and defines them. But the waters appear often in Scripture. The flood, where would we be about Noah and the flood? All those Bible stories. The exodus, wandering through the desert, the promised land, the river Jordan. Moses' name meant drawn out of water. Jesus said he was living water. In ancient Israel, when the rain came and the rivers flowed, that was evidence of God's activity in the world. And in the prophetic writings, water plays a vital role as demonstrating God's presence. In New Testament scriptures, we find Jesus today being baptized in water. We see him sitting in boats by water, teaching near the sea, changing water into wine, sleeping through a storm in a boat on water and walking on the surface of water. For Jews, water was a very precious commodity, especially if you lived in the desert areas, which were a lot of the area. There were many systems in place from wells to cisterns to aqueducts to supply water for those times when living water, that is fresh flowing water, was not available. There's something about water, especially the water of baptism, as I talked about with the children. Some people feel that the Jordan River is a very special place to be baptized. I know people who have gone there and they brought back their own little jug of Jordan River water and they keep it and they put drops of it in people's baptism waters to somehow make it better. I'm not sure, but whether or not Jesus being baptized in the Jordan River makes that water forever holy is not uh, the question I'm concerned with this morning. What I'm wondering today is not so much about the water we're baptized in, but what about the water that's for our souls? The water that Jesus talked about with the Samaritan woman at the well that day, that living water that never runs out, <coughs> that Paul spoke with the people in Ephesus uh, or in Acts 19, he asked them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you were baptized? Their answer was, we've never heard of the Holy Spirit. He thinks that was a different baptism than the one Paul expected that they had taken part in. One thing I've come to understand as I've researched these verses, there is a strong tie between our baptism that with water that's poured on us and the living water that's poured into us. 
What is our quantity or supply of living water today? Have you taken a, a thoughtful look at that today about yourself? We may not even give it much thought. We may not have ever really thought of it in terms of our baptism, but the two are inextricably tied together. And the next question I pondered, well, what does Jesus' baptism have to do with our own baptisms? I don't know if I've ever thought about that before. I started working on this sermon. He's the living water. He's the baptizer of the Holy Spirit. So why does he also go to John for baptism of repentance? There's a, you know, many commentary writings on that. For that is what John offered. It was a call to confess your sins, repent, be baptized and forgiven. A way to prepare for the kingdom of God was at hand. But how are his baptism and our baptism combined or connected? Well, if we look a little closer at our own baptism, we see that we're, our baptism is a little wider and deeper than John's baptism. Our baptisms are not only baptism of forgiveness for past sins, but a, a washing for rebirth and renewal. Tom Christ writes that, uh, about this. He says, when Jesus spoke to Nicodemus, he said baptism was being born again. So we who are baptized are baptized. Now, that seems a little redundant, doesn't it? It is an action of God, and through God, God recreates us to be something entirely different than the sinners we once were. As the Apostle Paul writes, we, are mysterious, we mysteriously die in Christ death and rise in Christ's uh, resurrection all out of the waters of baptism. Hmm. And we're baptized in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, praying and inviting the Holy Spirit to dwell in us forever. That's all, we do all of that in that simple baptism that we perform. Well, here's the interesting connection. When Jesus walked into the Jordan River to be baptized by John, he was not a sinner little problem here he had no sin and he had no need to repent in Matthew he's recorded as saying to John this baptism was to fulfill all righteousness Jesus was the only one who was ever able to have all righteousness in my understanding besides God for all those who came to be baptized by John and even for John Jesus fulfilled all their righteousness too and you and me when we came for baptism as well you see when jesus stepped in the river jordan it wasn't to take a swim it wasn't to part the water like joshua or moses and it wasn't to walk on the water like he'd done he will do later in scripture or anything else so very trivial when jesus stepped in and went under the water he took all the sins being washed out confessed out and worked out in those waters onto himself, just as he does when we are baptized. He began his work of taking on our sin long before the cross. And that had never really sunk in my head until I studied this scripture this last week or so. It all began in the Jordan River under John's baptizing hands. What's really beautiful about all this is God's response. Did you see what God did when Jesus took all of our sins on himself in the Jordan River? God threw back the sky and the Holy Spirit raced down and, and, and came to Jesus as God spoke these words of, of, of just loving um, endearment and praise to his son. You are my beloved son. With you, I am well pleased. Now, why did God say that? I won't wait for you to tell me the answer. You just ponder that for a minute or two. Remember when Jesus said, there is more rejoicing in heaven when one sinner repents than for 99 righteous persons who don't need to repent? You remember when Jesus said that? If there ever was a righteous person who didn't need to repent, who would that be? Come on. You know his name, Jesus. Yeah, I knew you could do it, just like the kids. Yes, it was Jesus. It appears to me that there was even more joy that day when one sinless son of God stepped into the water to take not only a baptism 
of confession on himself, but in the process took all the sin of all those who had confessed in that river and who had ever confessed sin in their baptism on himself. Indeed, there was a huge party in my mind that day in heaven. Why should we remember our baptisms? I mean, ours was probably didn't have that whole, I mean, do you remember that happening when you were baptized? I don't remember that happening when I was baptized. <coughs> Why should we remember our baptism? Why think about that little bit of water, as some of us ed, uh, endured, that was poured on our heads, or that pool where we, some of us, were dunked underwater? No matter whether you were baptized in the Jordan River itself in Israel, or you had a sprinkler on your head right here in this sanctuary, Jesus is at the center of your baptism. He is not only the one who frees us from all sin, he is the one who dived in to carry it away. He is not only the one who died on the cross and rose from the dead, which mysteriously we enter into within our baptisms, he pours the living water into us and enlivens our hearts, minds, and spirits so we can be his followers every day. When we remember, or use the fancy word, reaffirm our baptisms, it isn't just to say, yep, I did that, okay, moving on. Our baptism, your baptism, my baptism, and if you haven't been baptized, please come see me after service. We can talk about that. Our baptism is the, gen is the genesis of our faith journey, if you will, reaching all the way back to that scripture we read this morning. Oh, we may have come to believe before we were baptized, or maybe our baptism came long before we ever believed. Whichever it was, our baptism is key to our understanding of who we are and whose we are. We are no longer our own. In baptism, we share in Jesus' righteousness. And we have the same gifts as children of God that were given to Jesus. Let that sink in for a minute. We have the exact same gifts to manage every day that we live our lives. Jesus' baptism actually, if you look at it, gives us a look into what happened in the heavenlies the day you were baptized and the day I was baptized. We may not have been attuned to God's voice that yet or we might even realize that God would actually speak to us. I like how N.T. Wright sums it up in his commentary, Mark for Everyone. He says it this way. The whole Christian gospel could be summed up at this point that when the living God looks at us, at every baptized and believing Christian, he says to us what he said to Jesus on that day. He sees us not as we see ourselves, but as we are in Christ Jesus. It sometimes seems impossible, especially to people who have never had this kind of loving support from earthly parents, but it's true. God looks at us and says, you are my dear, dear child. I am delighted with you. Tom Christ writes in his commentary on this passage a slightly different way. And day after day, we return to those baptismal waters, reminding ourselves of God's promise and his love and our status as beloved children. We are free from sin by God's grace given in this precious way. There's something about the water. You see, we are people of the water inside and out. We are marked in baptism in a way that only God can see and only we know about. Well, now we know about each other maybe, but others may not see it. We must never forget and we must often remember whose image we bear and who God sees when God looks at us because of the waters of baptism. We are forever hidden in Christ and in him by the Father's good pleasure, we receive all of God's goodness and mercy. Let's pray. Holy and wonderful God, we have to ponder this a bit. 
that you would look at us the way you look at your own son. Maybe that's a very wonderful thing to ponder, more than just this hour this morning, but in the days and weeks to come. And Father, we thank you that Jesus did take on all that we would wash away in water through baptism, all that was in that River Jordan that wasn't his, all that is wa in all baptismal water that is washed off of us. He took that on himself in some wonderful, mysterious way, becoming and giving us righteousness. A righteousness that he had, that he gave up, that we would receive that righteousness. Lord, we, we bless you for a gift so mighty that it may take the rest of our lives to understand it, for a gift so wonderful that, that we are most grateful. Thank you for this day, Lord God. Thank you for your love. Thank you that as we come together at this time, we come bringing those that have needs. Because, Lord, you are who we come to in the time of great concern. You are the one who come to when we're of great elation. You hold all the moments of our lives, and you invite us to share them with each other and to share them with you. And so we do that now. We do that in faithfulness. We do that with expectation that in speaking these things, we, we invite you and you invite us to enter in together in making a difference in people's lives in this world. Just by our act of speaking, you over these people and, and when we tell them, and we explain that you are a part of their lives. Their lives can be different too and their situations. So Lord, we're thankful that Harriet's back in worship this morning. We bless you for that. Um, we thank you that Lila is home. We thank you that Genevieve is heading home with some help. Lord, these is, this is all good news. Lord, we um, lift up to you many folks that are listed on our list today. A little... A little dozer who um, has been uh, going through treatment for cancer. We lift up Ronnie, um, Mary's husband, who struggles with um, dementia, and her father, who is um, learning about treatment for lung cancer. Lord, we lift up Barbara and Helen, Joanne and Fred. These are all um, friends and neighbors of Dorothy, family and friends. And they've got various health issues, Lord. We lift them to you. We lift up Ryan and his sister Diane as they continue to recover from kidney uh, uh, surgery, donator and donor, uh, donor and, and receiver. We thank you for their continued health. We lift up Zachary. We lift up Mike Jessup. Lord, we lift up Kai, who also um, had an organ donation, received an organ. Lord, we lift up the family and friends of Sheila as they... Um, had a fundraiser yesterday, Lord, and for their continued healing of their hearts and souls. Lord, we lift up um, Rachel's father, David, and her mom as he continues to struggle with edema around his heart and um, the complications that that brings in his life. Lord, we lift up Trevor, who continues to improve, praise you, Lord, in his rehab from a terrible accident. We lift up Michael, we lift up Bill and Janet and their son Matthew and family. We lift up Donald. Lord, we lift up Eileen, and I'm sad I haven't been able to see her for a while, but God, I lift her to you for your continued grace and mercy. We lift up Alan. Um, we thank you for being with Janet. She's okay. She's just st staying out of the cold today. Thank you for being with Amelia and her wonderful scans that were, that were all normal last time she had them done. Praise you, Lord. We lift Samantha. We lift Jim and Kenda, and Kenda, she's had a terrible health issues this week, so I especially lift her to you, Lord. We lift Leonard and Linda 
and Pete to you. And Lord, those that struggle with addictions um, and mighty, the mighty issue that becomes in their families and in their own lives, and Lord, those who are grieving or who suffer from depression. Each of these folks, Lord, as well as those that are unspoken, the concerns in our congregation this morning. We know it's a new year, but Lord, sometimes old struggles continue. But we praise you and thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are not, you don't give up. Your grace is unending. Your mercy is beyond what we can imagine. And we believe you and trust in you as we walk with you this day and forevermore. We pray this in your name, Jesus, as we pray together the prayer that you um, taught us. Praying together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us offer a prayer of thanksgiving of God's gifts and for the gift of baptism in water in Jesus. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for your gifts to us, too numerous to count, most especially the gift of baptism. Lord, we thank you for the gifts that were brought forward this morning and that not only do you pour your spirit out on us, but even on our gifts, that they would be taken and multiplied and used for your glory. And Lord, today we are thinking about baptism. And we remember not only Jesus' baptism, but our own. Remember that someone prayed over water, just like we are. And a pastor held us in his or her arms or stood very near us. We remember how our parents took, maybe took our vows or Maybe we took our own vows when we offered ourselves to you, Lord Jesus, our Savior. And then, Father, we remember that water was poured out on our heads. We went under the water and came up joyous for new life in your Son, Jesus. We died to our old life. It was washed away, for we were then and are now a new creation in Christ Jesus our Lord. We thank you that at that moment, somewhere in heaven, Lord God, all through heaven, Lord God, you and all the angels were full of joy. And you said and you say again and again to us, you, and you might whisper your own name there because I can't say all your names at once. You are my very dear child. I am delighted with you. In your name, Lord Jesus, you who are our brother, we pray this prayer. Amen. Would you join in our closing hymn, which is Come thou font.
have a challenge for you in this new year. I invite you to take the words that God spoke over Jesus as to be words that you hear every morning or every night when you go to bed, that you are God's dear, dear child, and you, in you, God delights. And take those personally. God's speaking to you personal. So whatever the days and weeks bring, let that be running behind. You know, like how on a computer there's something running behind the current program. Let that be running behind your current program as you go in to this new year. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.